So the UFC is definitely 100% rigging the fight between Aljamain Sterling and Sean O'Malley. They hate Aljo. They're making it clear, and I mean very, very clear, that they don't want him to win this fight against Sean O'Malley. They hate Aljo. They're already salty, and they're already angry that he even beat Cejudo in the first place, and now they're going to make sure, and absolutely sure, that Aljamain Sterling will lose to Sean O'Malley, and they're going to make sure that happens. This fight is 100% being rigged as we speak of it right now. Now, do I think the UFC is doing some illegal activity? No, I think they are doing this within the, you know, the rule book, obviously. This is not some big scandal going on that's happening within the sport, not some corruption thing, but they're giving Sean O'Malley every single possible advantage that he can get at the moment. And they're giving Aljamain Sterling every single disadvantage. They don't want Aljo to win. They want him to lose and it's really obvious. And how are they doing this? They're making Aljo turn around in four months in August. Now Aljo has been somewhat active recently, but he's not that kind of guy who's gonna make a quick turnaround in four months time. He cuts so much weight. We see how big he is. He's a weight bully at bantamweight. He's not making 135 in four months. No, well, I think he will, yes, but it's gonna be a really, really rough weight cut on him. It's going to be probably his hardest weight cut yet, and the UFC knows that, and that's why they talked to Sean O'Malley beforehand and said whoever wins this Aljo versus Cejudo matchup, we're making them turn around in four months, and if they can't do it, you're getting an interim title fight against whoever wants to do it. And Dana pretty much spilled the beans on this one. He let it out, he let it known that this is what their plan is. He said in an interview, if Aljo is not ready or prepared for 292, they're going to give Sean O'Malley an interim title shot against who? And he gave three bucks to the guy who guessed Henry Cejudo. You know who I got a call from? Three guesses who called me today and said, uh, Aljo sounds like he doesn't really want to fight. Three guesses. 100 bucks right now for whoever can guess it. Henry. Who? Henry. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. What up? Like, they're not even trying to hide it, bro. It's That's the funny part about it. They don't care. And I think it's unfair on Aljo. I think this is probably the one time, uh, not the one time, but this is probably one of the few times I will actually defend Aljo because he, even though he may be cringe, even though his personality might not be the most best, he tries. He gives some effort into his, his promo. He gives some effort into hyping up his fights and building his fights. He talks well, he speaks very good. Like he really is a potential star. But since the Jan fight, people just don't, don't care. They don't like him and that's just what it is. He's kind of fluked his career somewhat, but I have respect for Aljo because he's at least attempting to try to build up his name. And it's unfair to him that the UFC is going way out of their way to make sure he is hurt for the fight, having a terrible weight cut and a shorter camp. They just don't want him to have any advantages or much preparation to fight Sean O'Malley. And you know why? Because this is Sean O'Malley's worst matchup. Stylistically wise, Aljamain Sterling has pretty much all the tools to beat Sean O'Malley on the ground. We saw with Corey Sanhagen, they have a similar build. Sanhagen and O'Malley have a very similar build and it's very possible that Aljamain Sterling can just come in there, get its back, put in a body triangle, choke him out in the first round and your big star, your big name next, hopefully Conor McGregor and Sean O'Malley, which he probably won't ever be that, but your next huge superstar name is gone, all the hype is dead, just got destroyed in the first round. They know that and the UFC are terrified of that happening. So they need to take it within their own hands, within their own grasp to make sure that O'Malley can get a first round KO and get that star making performance because that's what they want. They want that so bad. And it's not O'Malley's fault. If I was in his position, I would be doing the same exact thing. But I, the UFC can at least try to make it a secret. When O'Malley came into the cage after Aljo lost, he was already saying, you better be ready to cut weight soon. He was already telling Aljo that he's going to have to have a quick turnaround. He's been talking to the UFC probably ever since the Yan fight about him fighting in August against whoever won in between Aljo and Cejudo. I mean, they've been tight like this, O'Malley and the UFC. They're definitely pulling some strings, twisting some things 
to really get on O'Malley's good side. There's just no way they're not. And you could even tell in O'Malley's post-fight press, he knew that this was going to happen. He knew longer than anybody probably has ever known that he was getting the next title shot against the winner of Aljo and Cejudo. And the UFC needs a new star. We need another star besides Adesanya. We need that next big name. And Sean O'Malley is that next big contestant. However, this is his worst matchup. So they kind of have to do this. And this is not a new thing the UFC has done. Whenever their big star is waiting for a fight or has a fight coming up, they typically make, make the contender or the person who they want to lose have a quick turnaround so that the person who they want to win has an advantage. They're probably going to do the same thing for Adesanya depending on who wins the Whitaker and Duplessis fight because whoever wins that fight, they're going to have to make a quick turnaround if they fight Adesanya at 293. So the UFC is definitely trying, like they're making it obvious. They, they want to give some certain fighters advantages. Like I don't think the UFC is doing illegal or really shitty behind the scenes actions, but they're definitely making it known. Like they're definitely pulling some strings and definitely, you know, cooking some things up in the lab to where they can give certain fighters advantages. And it does feel bad for Aljo because like if he if he does win against O'Malley, people aren't going to like him. You know, people are going to hate him. I like Aljo. I think he like he's earned my respect throughout the, the course of his career, obviously, since the Yan fight and the UFC, they just really don't want Aljo as champ at all. And I understand why Aljo name value wise isn't the biggest. His, his fights, you know, they're not dull in my opinion, but they're not the most exciting fights you're ever going to see. His personality is cringe, you know, the whole situation with the Yan fight, the first one, that kind of put a, a bad hamper on him as a person. So they kind of want to remove him as champ, and it makes sense. But I think they need to give Aljo a fair shot. They just need to. Aljo right now has probably been the most active he's ever been in his career. As a champion, he's been a very active champion. Like, he deserves five to six months off to, like, heal up. And he might not even be healthy. Like, I haven't watched this video, but I saw in the title that he was basically saying, like, am I healthy? If he's not healthy, and if he's not healthy for that, for another championship fight, it's another W for the UFC, another advantage for Sean O'Malley in the W column for him so that he can get a first round KO against Aljo. And at this point, it would be hilarious. It would be so funny. I mean, I would probably die laughing on the floor if Aljo just subbed O'Malley in under a minute, that'd be crazy. It'd be insane. It probably won't happen, but that would be crazy if Aljo just came out and treated him like he did Sandhagen. But I think the UFC knows what they're doing here. They're not hiding the fact that they want O'Malley to win. I just wish they would be more fair about it. That's the thing I want them to do is just be more fair about it. They're going to build up O'Malley to be this next star. I'm telling you right now, don't listen. Don't listen to the MMA media or whatever the UFC says, they're going to make sure that they give the perception off that Aljo is somewhat like cannon fodder to O'Malley, that this has already been destined for O'Malley to win, that O'Malley has been, you know, just waiting for a shot. He has, he's the biggest name ever come in the sport. The UFC is going to meet ride O'Malley and they're going to really, really put down Aljo. And I'm telling you guys, don't buy into it. Don't buy into it. This is what the UFC wants. Please stay fair. Please stay open-minded. Please don't sleep on Aljo because he can definitely win this fight against O'Malley. And I think he will probably win stylistic matchup wise, but I just know the UFC is going to pretend that Aljo is basically cannon fodder and he's a fake champ and that he never deserved to be champion in the first place. And he got lucky and he fluked his career. And O'Malley is this next up and comer, this hungry guy who's been waiting for his title shot. He has all the skill sets. He's a KO artist. He's the best bantamweight to come through the division so far. The best prospect ever. They're going to influence that on you. Don't buy it. Don't fall for it. I'm telling you right now. That's what the UFC is going to do. That's what I have to say. That's my video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hit the subscribe button and hit that bell icon. I would very much appreciate that. I am streaming the cards on Saturday. So if you want to watch me or see my reactions between Kai Kara France and Amir Al-Bazi, tune in for that. Peace.